The Japanese spider crab is the largest arthropod alive today, which can reach up to four meters from claw to claw. But it pales in comparison to the size of the largest fish and mammals. So what are the limitations stopping arthropods growing as big as blue whales? We spoke to Dr. Leonidas Romanos Dabranoglu, a researcher here at the Museum of Natural History, who has worked to document arthropod biodiversity around the world. We're not exactly sure and we're not certain what is the maximum size of arthropods and why can they not exceed it. However, 300 million years ago, there were enormous arthropods, millipedes the size of small cars and dragonfly relatives the size of pigeons and other birds. Back then, oxygen levels were much higher than they are today. Uh, because arthropods breathe in a completely different way than we do, it seems that the bigger they get on terrestrial habitats, uh, the less able they are to um, absorb oxygen as efficiently. And experimental evidence shows that if you raise uh, an arthropod today at a much higher oxygen level, they can be up to 15% larger. So there could be some credibility to this hypothesis, but there's much more that we need to know. Every arthropod is built to the same basic body plan, made of segments that bear legs or other jointed appendages, and an exoskeleton that molts with growth. But despite their fundamentally similar structure, arthropods are hugely diverse in size. The size variation of arthropods is what has allowed them to colonize most of the planet's ecosystem, both terrestrial and marine. And this is because when you have such variation in small size, insects and other arthropods are able to fully exploit the breadth of available microhabitats in a much more substantial way that vertebrates do. So if you take a tree on a tropical rainforest, it can accommodate maybe a few dozens of vertebrates such as monkeys and birds. But studies have shown that up to 1,000 species of insect are able to live on just a single tree and they partition their habitats in all sorts of ways. Some are predators, some bore through the wood, while others browse on the foliage. So here you can see this charismatic Amazonian purple warrior beetle. This particular species diverges from its relatives in that it eats carrion. And due to its very large size, it's hypothesized that it used to feed on dead animals such as giant sloths that lived in South America and went extinct around 15,000 years ago. Although this small beetle here looks very much unlike uh, the Amazonian beetle, it's in fact its very close relative. However, it feeds on much smaller dead things such as uh, monkeys and lizards and sometimes even crushed millipedes. So you can see how body size variation allows even close relatives to exploit radically different microhabitats. To find out more stories like these from the museum's collections and research, visit our website and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.